Hello, in this video we're going to look at one of the most celebrated results in probability theorem, theory, Bayes' theorem. Our learning outcome is thus, for, for you to, by the end of this video, to be able to use Bayes' theorem to interpret probabilistic information. Now, as with so many things in mathematics, we can understand Bayes' theorem by thinking carefully about the way that we solve simple problems and by generalising the insights that we obtain by doing so. With this in mind, I thus have a simple problem for you. Here are my by now infamous set of blind man bluff players. I tell you that a quarter of the boys have degrees in engineering and that half the girls have degrees in engineering. There is an equal probability of picking each player um, in the game of blind man bluff. I tell you that you picked an engineer and I want you to tell me the probability, the conditional probability, that the person you picked is a girl. Pause the video and take some time to work out an answer. Hopefully you were able to work out that this probability is equal to one half. Now, as always, pause the video again and think about how you solved the problem. Now here is how I would do it. I first work out the total number of engineers. The question tells us that one quarter of the boys have degrees in engineering. So we have 1 over 4 multiplied by 4 male engineers. This is 1. Here I have shown that Conrad is the male engineer, just to make this clear. You cannot possibly tell that Conrad is an engineer from the question, but his character is based on a real person, and in real life Conrad does have a degree in engineering. Now to the other part of the question. We are told that half of the girls have degrees in engineering. Um, we thus know that there is one female engineer. We thus have a total of two engineers. OK, so the picture now makes the answer to the question obvious. We have two engineers in total, Conrad and Dawn, and one of them is a girl, so the probability, our conditional probability is a half. It is still worth pausing here for a moment and, taking, and thinking about how we would represent all this using mathematical symbols. We would write it the following way. The first thing to note is that the answer to the question is a conditional probability and not an absolute probability. It is the probability that we pick a girl, given that we definitely picked an engineer. We thus need to introduce two random variables, capital X, which is equal to 1 when we pick a girl, and capital Y, which is equal to 1 when we pick an engineer. Remember that we calculate this conditional probability by taking the probability that x equals 1 and y equals 1 and dividing it by the probability that y equals 1. The probability that x equals 1 and y equals 1 is equal to the probability that we pick a female engineer. There is one female engineer in total, so that is 1 sixth. The probability that y is equal to 1 is simply the probability that we pick an engineer. There are two engineers, as we showed in the previous slide, so the, pro so the probability of picking an engineer is 2 over 6. Simplifying these fractions, we thus arrive at one half. Easy. Right, so now that we understand our approach with a simple example, let's look at the general insight we've obtained and use it to answer a more complex question. The problem in question is this one. Consider a test to detect a disease that 0.1% of the population have. The, disease, the test is 99% effective in detecting a diseased, an infected person, However, the test gives a false positive result in 0.5% of cases. If a person tests positive for the disease, what is the probability that they actually have it? Now imagine that you'd been given this medical test and it had come up positive. You would be pretty worried. After all, you have been told that it is 99% effective in detecting diseased people, and this figure really screams out of you, at you. You are probably not thinking that you are one of the 0.5% of people who have got a false positive. The point is, though, that you probably should be thinking that it's just a false positive, as that is the far more likely explanation. Allow me to explain my, why this is the case. Let's use the data we are given in the question to draw a Venn diagram. Here is the sample space, and let's first of all divide the total probability between health and and diseased individuals as shown. So we, we, we divide along the x-axis 
H stands for healthy, and diseased stand, D stands for diseased. Now, as you can see, these two subsets are mutually exclusive, as a person cannot simultaneously have and not have the disease. Furthermore, when we add the probability that, have you, that you have the disease to the probability that you do not have it, you get one, as either you have the disease or you don't. There are no other categories. Notice, finally, that this picture is not at all to scale, as the errors of the squares are not at all proportional to the probabilities in the question. Let's now introduce the test for the disease. Every person we run this test on will fall into one of the four categories shown here. The majority of the people will fall into the category shown in the lower left of this figure. They will not have the disease, they will be healthy, hence the H, and when we run the test on them it will give a negative result, hence the N. In the panel immediately above this one, the one labelled P and H, we have those individuals for which the test gave a false positive. In other words, the test told us that they have the disease despite the fact that in actuality they do not. The top right, labelled P and D, contains all the people who have the disease and for whom the test gave a positive result. The final box, labelled N and D by contrast, is those unlucky individuals who have a disease which the test cannot detect. Now notice that these four outcomes are all mutually exclusive. You can either have the disease or you do not, and the test either gives a positive or negative results. There are no grey areas. In addition, notice that the people for whom the test gives a positive result are not separated off by the people who give the, from which the test gives a negative result by a horizontal line. This is because if you have the disease, the test is far more likely to give a positive result. This is a good thing. A test for, for which the probability of a false positive was equal to the probability of giving a positive result when you have the disease would be totally useless. With this diagram in place, let's look at the information we are given in the question once more. First of all, we are told that 0.1% of the population have the disease. Diagrammatically, we can represent this by drawing the red square shown here with an area that is 0.1% of the total area of the black square. Mathematically, this is, the, this is the, probability, the absolute probability of having the disease, P of D. We are also told that the test is 99% effective in detecting diseased people. This tells you that the purple square shown here has an area that is 0.99, the area of the blue square. This quantity is a conditional probability. In fact, it is the probability that you get a positive test result given that you actually have the disease. Now let's turn to the final thing we are told in the question, that the disease gives a false positive in 0.5% of cases. This is, the area of, this is the ratio of the areas of the green and yellow squares, and the conditional, the conditional probability that you get a positive test result even though you are healthy. Having interpreted all the data in the question, let's work out what we actually want to calculate. We would like the probability that the test was positive because you actually have the disease. In other words, we would like the conditional probability that you have the disease given that you've had a positive outcome for the test. By a similar logic employed to that in the previous sections, this is the area of the blue rectangle that corresponds to those individuals who are both diseased and for which the test came up positive, divided by the total area of the blue and green rectangles. The green rectangle is those people who got a false positive for, te for the test, those individuals who are both healthy and who got a positive test result. Symbolically, we can write the conditional probability that we would like to calculate as follows. On the numerator, we have the probability that we have the disease and a positive test result. This is then divided by the total probability of a positive test result. Obviously, we can decompose this total probability into a component that comes from those individuals who get a false positive and a component from those individuals who get a test result, positive test result because they actually have the disease. We can now use the information in the question and the definition of conditional probability to calculate all the terms in this expression. Let's look at the, con at the probability that our positive test result emerged because we actually have the disease. This can be calculated as shown here. 
We have the conditional probability for a positive test result, given that you have the disease, 0.99%, and multiply it by the probability of having the disease, 0.1%. In the Venn diagram, this gives you the area of the blue square. Let's now work out the probability that we get a false positive. To do this, we take the conditional probability for a positive test result in a healthy person, 0.5%, and multiply this by the probability that the person is healthy, 99.9%. Adding these two mutually exclusive outcomes together, gives us the total prob probability of a positive result. This is equal to 0 0.005985. We now stick all this information into the equation above to calculate the conditional probability that we would actually like, the probability that we are diseased given that we got a positive test result, and find out that the probability that we actually have the disease is only 0.165. This is a simple example of how we use Bayes' theorem to interpret probabilistic information. A statement of this theorem is shown at the bottom of this slide. We can do more complex things using this theorem, but if you understand the essence of the example with the medical test, then you can understand how this is applied when experiments have more outcomes than simply true or false. In order to be completely clear, let's just explain how the symbols in this expression relate to our earlier example with our group of six players of blind man bluff. If we look at the right hand side first, sorry, the left hand side first, P of B is the probability that we select a girl. The subset of individuals to whom this corresponds is shown as a black square here. P of A given B is the conditional probability that we pick a girl, um, an engineer given that we have picked a girl. Hence, P A vertical bar B multiplied by P B is the probability that we pick a female engineer. As we learnt earlier, Dawn is the only female engineer and thus the only member of this set. Now let's look at the right hand side. P of A is the probability that we select an engineer. The two engineers are shown in the green squares on the diagram above. P B given A is the conditional probability that our selected engineer is a girl and thus PB, vertical bar A, multiplied by PA, is once again the probability that we pick a female engineer. In this example, it is the probability that we pick Dawn. And that is Bayes' theorem. Hopefully you're now able to use it. If not, watch the video again and see if you understand it on the second time round. My key piece of advice would be, though, that if you're in doubt, try drawing a Venn diagram and to represent the information pictorial, pictorially, as this will make it so much simpler. Thank you.